As most of us remember, Pluto was considered to be the ninth planet of the solar system from its discovery in 1930 until 2006 when the International Astronomical Union reclassified it as a dwarf planet. Many people were upset about this at the time, as we can get quite emotionally attached to icy rocks, but it seemed like a reasonable decision. There are many other small icy bodies similar to Pluto, such as Haumea, Maki Maki, and Gong Gong. And in fact, the dwarf planet Eris is more massive than Pluto. These objects compose what is known as the Kuiper Belt. All these objects seem more similar to each other than they do to the other planets. The dwarf planet Ceres, located between Mars and Jupiter, was discovered in 1801. Upon its discovery, it was quickly classified as a planet. Shortly after this, Pallas, which is also located between Mars and Jupiter, was discovered in 1802. It was also considered to be a planet. This was followed by the discovery of Juno in 1804, which was called a planet, and then by Vesta in 1807, and that was called a planet too. More and more of these bodies continue to be discovered, and by about the 1860s, astronomers decided, as they're so small and so numerous, that they should be put in a category separate from planets, called asteroids in the asteroid belt. A similar thing happened with Pluto with the Kuiper belt. But, what is the formal definition that separates these objects from these objects? Well, the International Astronomical Union, or IAU, came up with the definition for a planet. It is as follows. A celestial body that, A, is in orbit around the Sun, B, has sufficient mass for its self-gravity to overcome rigid body forces so that it assumes a hydrostatic equilibrium, nearly round shape, and C, has cleared the neighbourhood around its orbit. This definition is what excluded Pluto. To be honest, this definition has a lot of problems with it. Most obviously, the requirement that it must orbit the Sun. Are the over 5,000 exoplanets not considered planets just because they orbit a star that isn't the Sun? Maybe that's why they're often called exoplanets instead of planets, but I think most would agree these are planets too. And what does has cleared its neighbourhood around its orbit supposed to mean? Planets have a tendency to trap objects in its orbit 60 degrees in front and 60 degrees behind in what's known as the L4 and L5 Lagrange points respectively. Jupiter has thousands of asteroids in its Lagrange points, and Uranus, Neptune, Earth and Mars also have objects in the Lagrange points. There is also the fact Pluto intersects the orbit of Neptune. Despite all this, all the planets are considered to be planets. Maybe cleared its orbit means it is significantly more massive than any other objects within its orbit. Jupiter is far more massive than its Trojan asteroids and Neptune is far more massive than Pluto. Various astronomers have proposed definitions to what cleared its orbit actually means. A popular definition is Sota's mu, or the planetary discriminant. It is defined as the ratio of an object's mass to all the objects that share its orbit. What is defined as sharing its orbit? It is when two objects share a common distance from the Sun. Objects that are in resonant orbits, where the ratio in time for the different objects to orbit the Sun has small integer ratios, also don't count as sharing an orbit, as these arrangements are considered stable. This is the case for Pluto and Neptune. Neptune completes three orbits every time Pluto completes two, so they don't count as sharing an orbit. If you calculate the planetary discriminants for each object in the solar system, the eight objects we consider planets have enormous planetary discriminants, meaning they are far more massive than anything in their orbits. Pluto's planetary discriminant is extremely small by comparison. So Pluto is not a planet? Well, I have a problem with this definition. The further away a planet is from the Sun, the more difficult it becomes for it to clear its orbit. 
If Pluto was in Mercury's orbit, Pluto might be considered a planet. And this is a part of a more general issue I have with the definition of a planet. The fact that it is a planet or not depends on the nature of its orbit. A planet-like object freely floating in space without a star? Not a planet. That's a rogue planet. A planet-like object orbiting another planet? Not a planet. That's a moon. A planet-like object far enough from its star that it becomes hard to clear its orbit? Not a planet. That's a dwarf planet. Some objects that are not planets seem very much like planets. Saturn's largest moon, Titan, has a thick atmosphere, lakes, rivers, and volcanoes. Titan's diameter is even larger than Mercury's. In other star systems, there are likely to be moons far more massive than the ones found in the solar system. Kepler-1625bi and Kepler-1708bi are candidate exomoons which are larger than Earth possibly being gaseous like Neptune. Yet, we don't consider these objects as nearly as big as Neptune as planets. Note that both these exomoons are not confirmed, so they could be later proven to not exist. The System 2 mass J1119-1137 AB contains two rogue planets of four Jupiter masses that are orbiting each other. Which one is the moon and which one is the planet? These massive gas giants have almost the same mass. Pluto's moon Charon is about a sixth of the mass of Pluto. So massive that Pluto and Charon orbit around a common center of mass outside of Pluto. Is Charon really a moon of Pluto? In the star system Gamma Cephei, Gamma Cephei A is an orange giant star and Gamma Cephei B is a red dwarf. Gamma Cephei A is more than three times as massive than Gamma Cephei B. The smaller star effectively orbits the larger star. But does that change the fact Gamma Cephei B is a star? No! Gamma Cephei B is still a star, not a starlet or something. Why should we treat planets differently? Two of the three IAU planetary criteria use orbital characteristics as defining characteristics of a planet but I believe both should be discarded. What about Criterion B? Has sufficient mass for its self-gravity to overcome rigid body forces so that it assumes hydrostatic equilibrium, nearly round shape. A liquid under the influence of its own gravity will pull itself into a spheroid shape. If the body is not rotating, this will be a perfect sphere. If it is rotating, it will be an oblate spheroid which is similar to the Earth, which is 42 kilometers wider at the equator than at the poles. If it is rotating fast enough, it will become a scalene ellipsoid, like the dwarf planet Haumea. If there are tidal forces on the object, the object can also be pulled into a scalene ellipsoid, as seen with this photograph of Mimas, as a result of Saturn's tidal forces. Of course, planets are not always made of liquid, so if they don't have enough gravity, they cannot pull themselves into a perfect ellipsoid, leaving you with potato-shaped asteroids, which I don't think anyone would call planets. But how round must a body be to be round? The Earth has mountains and valleys, meaning it is not perfectly smooth, but we consider it round enough to be a planet. Is the asteroid Hygieia round? It looks roundish. What about Uranus's moon, Miranda? It is kind of round. What about Iapetus, with its 20 km high equatorial ridge, and the fact that it is wider at the equator than it is meant to be, given its rotational speed? Wikipedia even lists the moon as not being in hydrostatic equilibrium, as it is slightly more elongated than you would expect. But if you look at a lunar elevation map, which is made in comparison to a perfect sphere, we're only talking about a difference of a few kilometers. There is also the problem that different materials are harder to pull into round shapes than others. Mimas, Miranda and Enceladus are all close to round, despite being less massive than the asteroid Vesta, as ice is less rigid than rock. Enceladus does have a subsurface ocean, so it is debatable whether you can say it overcame rigid body forces, given water is not rigid, but Jupiter is largely made of gas and that is not rigid at all. Did Jupiter overcome rigid body forces? 
Due to the vagueness of the criterion, I think we should scrap the hydrostatic equilibrium criterion too. But without that, we don't have a definition for a planet. What could replace it? What I think should set planets apart from minor planets is their mass. Above a certain mass, we should say the object is a planet, and below this mass, we should say that it is a minor planet. But where should we put the line? This mass should be greater than the mass of Vesta, as that is clearly not round. It is debatable if Iapetus is round, and Iapetus has a mass of 1.8 times 10 to the power of 21 kilograms, so maybe something a bit more massive than that. How about 10 to the power of 22 kilograms? I know it is arbitrary, however, the current definition of a planet is so vague that it forces you to make arbitrary decisions. So the definition of a planet I propose is a body that a has a mass greater than 10 to the power of 22 kilograms, b has a mass below 2.4 times 10 to the power of 28 kilograms, and c not be a black hole. If you are wondering where I got 2.4 times 10 to the power of 28 kilograms as the upper limit, it is the point at which the mass of the object is so great that the fusion of deuterium in the object's interior becomes possible. Objects above this mass limit are generally considered to be brown dwarfs or stars. It also excludes neutron stars and white dwarfs from being planets. While they are not actively fusing elements in their cores, these objects are the remains of dead stars that are typically a lot more massive and dense than what we consider to be planets. The least massive white dwarf known is still 200 times more massive than Jupiter. In regards to Criterion C, it not being a black hole I think is obvious. While we do not know of any black holes with masses similar to a planet, they could be out there. Under the new definition, Pluto, with a mass of 1.3 times 10 to the power of 22 kilograms, would be classed as a planet, and so would the dwarf planet Eris. The overall number of planets in the solar system would become 17. The planets would be Mercury, Venus, Earth, the Moon, Mars, Jupiter, Io, Europa, Ganymede, Callisto, Saturn, Titan, Uranus, Neptune, Triton, Pluto, and Eris. Yes, the definition is arbitrary, but precise. I can't think of a precise way of separating minor bodies from planets that is not arbitrary. But, if you have any ideas, please suggest them in the comments below. That's all for this video, so goodbye.